Well, well, praise the Lord. I'm setting up a little late tonight because I'm watching the news and I'm watching about the Vatican. I'm watching about, uh, you know, they're having a con the conclave tonight again. And <sighs> Of course, I haven't picked no one yet. But they was talking, a couple of priests in the newscaster was talking about the pedophilia in the church. Hmm. And they were making excuses of, uh, you know, the cover-ups and things, you know, moving these priests around from one group of people to another, just to keep doing whatever they was doing to these children. And one of the priest's excuse was about the hierarchies. They just didn't know how to handle these men that was molesting these children in the church. You know, above all else, you've got to protect the reputation of the church. Even it means cover up, hide the priest, uh, move him into another congregation. <sighs> Let me read you out of the Bible what it says. Listen up, you pastors. Listen up the congregation of these churches, whether you're Catholic or Baptist or Episcopalian or Methodist or holiness, or whatever you call your name. This is what you are to do to these people that do this thing, okay? So, let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning with verse 1. And I, brethren, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, not chapter 1. Let me see. Okay. 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 Chapter 5. Excuse me. Chapter 5. Verse 1. It's Paul talking to the church at Corinth. Okay. And he says, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. So there was this man that was in the church, and was having an affair with his father's wife. And so he goes on and s s tells them. Because, see, the church knew what was going on. And Paul says, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you? For I verily, as abstained in body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I was present concerning him that hath so done this deed. Okay, this is talking about a man having a relationship, a sexual relationship with his father's wife. Can apply to children where these pedophilias are taken advantage of. What should we have done to them? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are together, gather together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan. So what should those Catholic hierarchies done to these men to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh 
that the spirit may be saved in the day of, of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Your glorifying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? In other words, he was saying, by you letting this go on in the Catholic Church, by you permitting these priests to do pedophilia and destroy innocent children's lives, you let the leaven, the sin, the evil stay in your church. And not only did it give your church a bad reputation, it polluted it because leaven in bread grows. And that's what it did in the Catholic Church. That's what it's done in some of these other churches out here. It says, Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sanct sanctuary and truth. I, I write unto you in an epistle not to company, be, not to company with fornicators in other words we're not associate with these people we're to kick them out of the church get them out of the church so they won't be able to pollute the church you know back in exodus in place god told them if there was sin found in the camp they are to take that person out and stone him outside the camp well, Paul is doing the same thing as saying, if you find sin in the camp, if you find leaven inside your church, inside the camp, get it out. Cast it out. Tell them they have to get out. Ye not all, all together with four, uh, see, I write unto you an epistle to the company with Cut with fornicators, yet not altogether with fornicators of the world, or with the covenant, or exhortators, or with the idolaters, for they must ye need go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, and a covenant, an idolater, a railer, or a drunkard, or an exhorter with such one, no, not eat. And that includes pedophiles. You've let sin come into your camp. You've let sin stay in your camp instead of getting rid of it right at the first. If, the, if you, the Catholic people, the church, if the church, the hierarchy, would have started getting rid of those priests when it first started happening, it, it would have pinched it right there. They would have got rid of the leaven, and because the, the church is supposed to be unleavened with no sin in it, it would have got rid of it. But no, they compounded the problem by hiding it and moving these priests around from here to there, there to here, and trying to cover it up, just solely for the reputation of the church, where you have defiled the church. You have let leaven come into your body and pollute it. For what have I to do to judge them outside that are without do not ye judge them that are within so if you got the group inside the church it is your job to judge what they're doing if they are sinning fornicating doing all the things that they are not adultery and reveling and drunking if they're doing all this stuff if they're a pedophile of all things get them out 
Turn them over to the law. Let the law take care of the course. But then, them that are without God, judges, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Put that wicked person away. That's exactly how the church is supposed to take care of a problem that's inside the church. When you have a brother <coughs> or a sister saying they're part of the body and they are doing this and they're polluting the body, then get them out. Get them out before it pollutes the whole body. But you say, but I love that brother and I don't want to see him go off and get lost. Sometimes you have to let him go. That way when they go out into the world and they're judged of their deeds and Satan renders them, then they can see what they have done. As long as you're petting them on the head and saying it's all right, they're not going to know. That what they're doing are, is really sin. Wrong. It just disturbed me that they would say that these hierarchy priests didn't know how to handle the problem. Don't they read the scriptures ever? You know, we're in the last days. These are very troubling times that's going on. And there's a time that you have to get the sin out of the body. You know, you should have said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. If your hand offends you, cut it off. That's what it's saying. If there is something, someone in the body of Christ that has leaven in them and that leaven can pollute the whole body you've got to cut it out pluck it out you got to pluck it out and throw it away you got to cut it off and throw it away you can't let it stay inside there you can't keep communion with this person because he says he says but now I write unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or a covenist or an idolater or a railer or a drunkenness or an exerter such a one. Do not eat with. Right now it was kind of talking about Passover when you're talking about the Passover feast. You cannot let them in. And you know what they're doing. And they're doing is sin. That sin is brought into the body of Christ. And it will pollute the whole body eventually. That's why you can't let it stay. You can't even keep company with that person. Yes, pray for them. But you can't permit them in. For the soul's sake of the rest of the sheep. You know, God hates sin. He's always hated sin. That's why Adam and Eve got kicked out because of disobedience. He hasn't changed, not one ounce. You may have changed, but he hasn't changed. The same sin he hated back then is the same sin he hates now. And when you stand before him, he will judge you for it. And as a whole of the body of Christ, if you permit it to be in your community, your, uh, your meetings and amongst your group, 
and you permit that thing to happen and and <coughs> instead associate with them you're polluting the whole body you're putting the whole body in jeopardy it's time for the body to grow up because you see Yeshua HaMashiach's bride will be taken home someday soon when I don't know I mean it's very plainly Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ said no man knows what hour or day it is no man he said the angels don't know I don't know there's only one person that knows and that's the father And I am sure that Yeshua HaMashiach will be the first one to know when the Father says it's time to come and get the bride. You know, everybody argues over the rapture or the taking of the bride, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't. Because if you're not ready, you're not going home anyway. You're not going to be taken. The whole essence, what Yeshua taught us, is to be ready at all times to watch and to pray and to be ready when that moment comes. We are to be caught watching and praying and earnestly being ready to go at any moment and that means that we have to keep all the sin out of our life and away from our being and not be associating with it because if we're not ready no matter when he comes you're not going I just have to tell you the truth it is important Passover is almost upon us Now, we know that there's many people that's cleaning their houses, getting all the leaven out, all the bread and all their things, cleaning and they're cleaning their vessels. They're cleaning everything to be ready for this Passover. They do it every year. But are they cleaning this temple? You know, this is the temple of God. Know ye not that this is the temple? We need to learn what Passover is. I, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, the Easter Bunny never laid eggs. I'm sorry to bust your bubble, but Easter Bunnies don't go around laying eggs. Chickens lay eggs. And Easter has nothing to do with the death of Yeshua upon the cross or his resurrection nothing because it is a fertility worship of a female goddess on a Pacific day which is the spring equinox it is a Roman one of one of Rome's main religions that got put into the church whereas the Passover the true event that happened almost 2,000 years ago or 2,000 years ago when Yeshua was put on the cross it was during Passover just before Passover for Yeshua was that sacrificial lamb for the Passover. He had nothing to do with the Easter bunny or the Easter eggs or fertility goddess. He had nothing to do with it. He came to be that sacrificial lamb on Passover. That was the lamb 
You know, in Egypt, when they had to slaughter the lambs and take the blood and put it on the doorpost of their homes, so when the death angel flew over, they would see the blood and it would pass over. That's the reason why it's called Passover. The judgment, the fury of God passed over. When Yeshua died on that cross, he died and become the Passover lamb for us. So that his blood that he shed on the cross would be applied to the doorpost of our heart. So when the wrath of God comes down and goes over this earth, it will pass over you. Just like that night in Egypt when the death angel passed over the houses that had the blood and took the first of uh, the firstborn's life in the other houses the Egyptians and the few Israelites that refused to do what Moses told them to do if we don't have that blood applied to our lives and realize what Passover really is God's wrath is coming upon this earth it is and if we do not have that blood applied to our heart we're going to suffer the consequences of his wrath the only thing that will keep his wrath from landing smack on you is when he sees the blood when he sees the blood he will pass over you just like he did those houses in Israel back in Egypt we need to clean house we need to clean our house spiritually. We need to clean our house around us and who we even associate with sometimes. I'm feeling very strongly that we need to repent. Yes, do we witness to those people? Yes, we do. Do we live a life that is the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua himself, and let that light shine for it from us? So if that person that we've had to exercise of from our life will see it and desire to be more like us and, and get that quality of Jesus in their life, and, and by them knowing that we're not going to tolerate your sin, we're not going to pet you on the head and say it's okay. We're not going to stand up and say, Hey, you guys, you homosexuals, it's okay. No, no, I I'm telling you it's not okay. Because God says it's not okay. And when you women go down and you abort your babies, you may say, you know, society says that's okay. But no, it's not okay. God says it's not okay. He's the judge. And it's his wrath that's going to come upon this earth soon. And if you don't have your heart covered with the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, you're going to suffer from his wrath. The only way you can keep from suffering from God's wrath when he sweeps down upon the sinners and starts to cleaning off that stigma, that that stitch off of this earth of sin. The only way he won't put it on you, well, when he sees the blood, he will pass over. He will pass over. It's time to get the leaven out of your life, period. You need to do a physical and a spiritual house cleaning. And I feel this as an urgency tonight. You know, he's going to purify us. He's going to purify us as gold 
the silver. And you, you, you know how you purify gold? You put it in the fire. It melts down. And all the crud comes up to the top. And you take the label and you skim off that crud. But it, it, it is purified by fire. That's what causes the gold to melt, to break totally down. And all the gunk, the, all the impurities float to the top so they can be skimmed off. When you see a bar of gold, it is pure. It has no adverse residue in it. It's been totally cleansed, melted down, and cleansed by fire. You know, I had a man tell me that we were diamonds in the rough. And I've thought about that several times. And it, all of a sudden, when I was studying, uh, uh, studying about, uh, oh, you know, plants and vegetations and, and stuff, you know, do you know, uh, it takes many, many thousands of years for a diamond to form because, you know, the stuff up here decay and it goes down and it goes into coal and the pressure of a coal if you take it and you and, and the pressure of the, the rock and stuff and the earth grinding together and pressing it in then you have a diamond but it takes a lot of pressure and pressing on it to form a diamond When I thought about what he really said and went, you know what? That's how gems and, and things are made here on earth. It's pressure and the pressing down and the heat. You know, volcanoes come and the lava flows and the, the heat. It always seems it takes pressure and heat to make a lot of things that are very precious to mankind here on earth. Fire and pressure. The pressing down. The pressing together. That's what he's doing to us. You know, I preached the other night about the baptism of fire. That's what we're going to be going through, the baptism of fire. Just like Yeshua had to drink of that cup. When he went to the garden, that's the thing that he kept saying, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, your will be done. In Hebrews, it says that he learnt obedience to the Father through the things that he suffered. It's that pressing down, that pressing together, and the fire that he had to walk through for us. He did it. Even though he prayed, oh, let this cup pass from me, but nevertheless your will be done. I know this many times that I've prayed. I don't want to go through this. I don't want to go through this. But believe me, I might not have wanted to go through it. But I have found when it come out on the other side, I was changed. Changed. And each time I have to go through that pressing down, that fire a melting down and and 
skimming the dross off every time I change. I change for His glory, not for mine, but for Him. The pressing is here upon us. Keep your eyes upon Him. Don't worry about the rapture or, or what else is going to be happening around this world because it's going to happen. I mean, it's going to. It's biblically. It's prophesied throughout the Bible what's going to be happening. But we got to keep our eyes on Yeshua HaMashiach, period. And waiting for Him, waiting, anticipating for Him to come back, looking for Him anxiously, and yearning for Him, no matter what's going on around here. And when it's time for Him to come back, He will come back. He promised. He said, I would. He said, I'll come back. I go to prepare your mansion, and I'll come back. He promised, and He will. We may not know what day or time, hour. He may not even yet know what day or hour. But the Father does. And the Father will speak very plain. And when He speaks, go get Him. He'll come. Keep your eye on Yeshua. Clean your house of all the leaven. And become the work of the unleavened bread in His hand. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I come to you and I plead the blood over this video. Let your holiness and your righteousness shine forth. Let people come to you. Let them know that this is the day and the hour of your cleansing. That they are need to let you cleanse them. Repent and be baptized in your holy fire of the Rukadesh. Cleanse from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. Repent and say, here am I, Father. Cleanse me. Here am I. Do as you will. And your glory be done. And your grace be done. Let your light shine from me. Let that salt of the earth flow from me of cleansing, cleansing, cleansing. In the name of Yeshua, bless this video. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen.